So when I first got into reselling, I would use this app almost every single day when I was outsourcing to determine whether or not the item was worth buying at the price that they were advertising it for. The app's called eProfit. By no means is this sponsored or anything like that, but I just thought this would be a really cool, useful tool for you guys. If you're brand new to reselling, if you've only done it for a few months, it's a great way to quickly work out what your profit will be when you take out all the fees and everything. And as you'll see here, I'm putting it up sort of the, the process of how it works. You just need to type in your sold price, your shipping charge, um, the shipping cost, and the item cost. It's just a four step process. You can turn managed payments on, you can put a promoted listing percentage in, and the calculator just works out exactly what your profit will be. So a really cool feature. If you're new to reselling, you're not quite sure on the numbers, hopefully this app will uh, help you out. So let's get into the episode. Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really well. This is the Sunday show where I take you through nine of my very best sold sales items on eBay and on Facebook Marketplace. It's been an interesting week this week. An accumulation of sales is what I would put it down to. Just chipping away, and I'll have a bit of a chat about that a little bit later on in the episode. I've got a great featured reseller of the week for you as well, so stick around for that. And uh, I'll be taking you through my weekly sales numbers, like I touched on, an interesting week of sales. Some really cool items here. I'm gonna dive into the first one, which was a Holden Racing top that I sold for some pretty good money. So let's get into it. Now, to be honest, I haven't really done too many of these. Uh, it was a Holden Racing shirt, um, paid $7 for it in the op shop. The comps were pretty good though for this exact item on eBay. I found a few exact matches, um, ended up selling it for 50 bucks, which surprised me, to be honest. So I thought this was a pretty good sale. Um, we'll be looking out for these if I do find any of the racing shirts. I'll, I'll probably end up grabbing them based on this one. Postage was $7.32, the fees were $7.50. I'm doing it at about 15% worth of the fee rate uh, in this episode. After having a look at my analytics, I'm, I'm paying about 15% all up. Um, profit there of $28.18. So 29 day sales cycle guys, sold in a pretty quick space of time. Um, we're not at Bathurst, I don't think at the moment, which is generally when I think most of these would probably sell. Uh, $28 profit though for a shirt, that's well above my average. So I was very happy with that one. Now guys, I do talk about it quite a bit in my trips to the thrift videos. Whenever I'm buying my DVDs, I'm always looking for brand new and sealed. One, they sell quicker, and two, you get a few more dollars for them. This was one of them. It was a compilation set of uh, Billy Connolly, the, the comedian. Um, he is a funny man and I do like him, so I thought I'd, I'd grab him here with the brand new sealed. Um, I paid $5 for it in the op shop and it sold for $37.95 based on exactly what the comps were on eBay. I get a lot of messages on this YouTube channel around that. How do I price a certain item? I don't know, that's probably the answer for it. I really don't know. I just simply rely on the eBay sold searches app and, uh, and do my research there. So that would be my only advice for you guys that are inquiring about what to price your item for. Literally just use the eBay app. I, I did that for this item. It sold in the space of seven days purely because that's what the item sells for on eBay. So to get $37.95 postage fees, profiting basically $20 for a DVD sealed set uh, in the space of just seven days. I thought that was pretty good. Now, one really quick tip for you when you are looking through those DVDs, as I touched on, one is obviously just to scour for brand new and sealed first and foremost. Then the second one would be to have a look to see if there's any games in there that have accidentally been allocated to the DVD rack. I managed to find this one here, which was System Shock 2. It was a PC game and was hiding in amongst the DVDs. Now, the comps for it were really good. I think there is a copy of System Shock out there that can go for upwards of $200. I did my research. Unfortunately, this one was only worth exactly what I got for it, but it did sell internationally, so it did make a few more dollars. Now, it sold for $58.95. The postage to Hungary, which is where it went to, was $24.95. 99 cents. Uh, the fees of $8. I ended up profiting $24 on this $1 game purchase uh, out of the op shop. So a really, really good thing to have a look for when you're in the thrift is to look through the DVDs, try and find the games and then see if they are worth a few. I've had a really good result here in a 99 day sales cycle on System Shock number two. Now, a couple of months ago, I bought a huge PlayStation 2 bundle off Facebook Marketplace. If you haven't yet checked out that video that I made, go and check it out in the link here that I'll put up for you above. But ultimately, there was a really cool haul. $120 was spent and there was upwards of about $800 to $1,000 worth of resale value. It was just awesome. This was one of the games out of that haul. I paid, basically, I'll allocate myself a dollar towards it. Uh, I ended up selling it for $27.95. Crash Bandicoot was the game. I profited $18 and 25 cents off this one single game. And I think there was about 40 odd games in the bundle. So I basically split out two different 
different console packs with a bunch of games in each console pack. And then I allocated about five or six games to be sold off separately, just individual price points like this one. Overall, the $120 purchase, I've sold half of that allocation and I've sold it for $500. So I'd like to think that I could sell the remaining for about another 500 and turn that $120 purchase into $1,000. It was an incredible haul. Go and check out the video. Awesome to get Crash Bandicoot sold out of it today. Only half of it left to go. Fingers crossed I can hit that thousand dollars over the next few weeks. This next one was a good one, guys. Dryzerbone Australia is a great brand to be on the lookout for. Aussie made, high quality, always getting top dollar for this one. I don't typically buy vests too much, but uh, in this case, I kind of had to when I saw the Dryzerbone name. Paid $6 for it in the thrift, sold it for 40 bucks on eBay. Now, I took a best offer on $40. I had this one listed up for 50 bucks, and even then, I thought 50 was pretty cheap for this sort of an item. Uh, I did have free postage allocation with this one because it was to somebody literally just around the corner. Uh, so I could go and drop this one off. Now the fees was $6, so I ended up profiting 28 bucks. Like I said, I don't typically sell vests too much. Um, so to make $28 in a new item of clothing that I haven't previously done before, I was just happy to get that one done. And a 30 day sales cycle, it still sold pretty quick. Um, but like I said, if you do find your dryer's a bone brand, you can generally go top end dollar. Um, I've probably gone unders on this one, but I figured dropping it off to someone locally, it was, it was probably worth it. Now, I've learned a bit of a lesson with this one, guys, and you guys hopefully do remember it. It was Monkey, the DVD. Um, this was the full set, the full collector's edition uh, of, the, of the TV show Monkey. Um, now, I didn't know too much about this when I saw it in the thrift. It was priced quite highly. I paid $20 for it. Um, now, if it was in full collection, full, full edition, every single DVD in the packet, which it wasn't, uh, it would have gone on to sell for about $70 or $80, I think. So it was well worth the purchase at 20 bucks. But I made the very rookie error of not checking all the DVDs in the box. And there was one DVD missing. I think there was about six in the set and I only had five of the six DVDs. So I had to market this one as one disc missing. And for that reason, I had to drop the price as well. Uh, it ended up selling though in the space of 73 days for $49.99. So I've cost myself about 30 bucks there. If I had the uh, the full set, it would have gone for the full 70 or $80 pretty comfortably, I would have imagined. Postage and fees, guys, I've only profited $15.17. But if you can find the full set of Monkey, you will make yourself a pretty top dollar. So I've learned myself a lesson there, guys, and I do want to pass it on. When you are looking for DVDs and games, please check to make sure that they're all in there. I've been able to sell these two times U shorts that I picked up out of the thrift just last Thursday in that episode. It was the round, the first op shop run that I actually did that day. Paid $4 for them, thought that I could get $35 for it, and I did. $35, bucks, take out fees and post. Profited $18.43 on these ones. They were in like new condition. They were a men's size medium, and they sold within the space of just 48 hours, guys. So it was a really quick sale, this one. Almost $20 profited off this $4 purchase in the thrift. So a fantastic result. What I will say with the running shorts is that if you can find the compression, underneath the running short. I've generally found that they go on to sell for a little bit more money and a little bit quicker sales cycle. So when I saw that on these pair of two times use, I thought I'd definitely go for it. Two times use a really good brand as well. But if you can find the compression underneath, you'll generally go all right. Now guys, I've got a pair of shoes for you. It wouldn't be a week of what's sold without a pair of shoes. They are my most favorite item to sell. I've been able to get these uh, Nike Element 87 men's running shoes. They're a US size eight. I was given these to me for free which is just even better. And uh, they ended up selling overseas, which has made me a few more dollars with the way I do my international postage costs. Uh, $95 was the sale price on these ones. A really great pair of shoes, the Element 87s. Um, the fees were $14. It did cost me $22 to send them to, I believe the United States. Uh, or actually, no, it might've been the UK for these ones. Uh, I ended up profiting $63.95, guys. It sold in the space of just two weeks, 15 day sales cycle. So look, sold a couple of pairs of shoes this week, no doubt about it. They always sort of trickle away, but this was by far the best one. $63.95 in your pocket, man. That was a really cool sale. Now guys, in my trip to the thrift episodes, I do harp on this item as a bread and butter winner for myself. It is the just the men's standard footy shorts so of any kind. They can be training shorts, playing shorts, whatever the case may be. As long as it's got the team on the leg, you're generally gonna go on to sell them. Look, I ended up finding these Gold Coast Titans shorts again just last week. I paid $4 for them. A three-day sales cycle on these ones. I've sold incredibly fast. 
$29.99, a $4 purchase. Just the way I like to do it, guys. It's just that sweet spot. It generally sells fast. Um, I make myself a, a relatively decent profit of about $15. Uh, and the fees are only $4.50. So just a quick win, guys. When you find your footy shorts, I did sell, which I won't touch on in this video, but a pair of Parramatta footy shorts in the NRL as well. They sold for $32, and I bought them for $4 as well. So they're really quick bread and butter item winners. They can put $15 in your pocket super fast. So they were my nine best sold sales items of the week, guys. Hopefully you've got a little bit of info to help your own reselling business out of that lot. Let's dive into our featured reseller of the week now. And this week we have JT's Funko Finds based out of Perth in Western Australia, flipping Funko Pops. Uh, it's actually exactly how I started my reselling journey. I was in Perth and I was flipping Funko Pops. Um, so a really cool chick. She's uh, She's got about 400 odd subscribers on her YouTube channel. She is forever growing, um, doing some really great things on the channel. So go and give her uh, some love. Hit the subscribe button and leave a comment on her video. Say that I sent you there. And um, yeah, she's got a really cool item that I thought I'd highlight in today's video. An item that I would actually really love to find in the thrift myself. I'd probably have to keep this one because it was my size. It was a Brooklyn Nets Kyrie Irving jersey. This is a swingman size extra large and she was a bit worried that it sold in such a quick space of time. She thought that she might have underpriced it. Sold for $50. She paid $10 for it out of the thrift and to be honest, I think that's actually a pretty good result on Facebook Marketplace. Remember, there's no fees and you're profiting yourself $40. So I wouldn't be too concerned about that sale. I think for myself personally, if I'm able to sell a jersey for $50 on Marketplace, I'm usually pretty happy. So well done, JT. Thought I'd highlight you this week. Go and check her out on her Instagram and on her YouTube channel. All the details will be in the links below. Well done, JT. You're our featured reseller of the week. All right, guys, let's have a look at my weekly sales numbers to let you know how I've gone this week. A total of 46 items have been sold. And remember, Remember, it is only 12 o'clock here on a Sunday afternoon, so I am fairly confident that I'll be able to get the four more that I need to hit my magical number of 50 sales in a week. And total revenue, 1,848. I'm hoping for $151.50 to come in this afternoon, so that can tick over to the $2,000 mark yet again. Fees are 314, the postage was 398, and the new inventory spend of $648. So I did buy a number of items this week, that's for sure. A net cash flow of just 486 seven dollars guys um Look, I'm actually not too disappointed about 487 worth of a net profit because it just was more of a spend this week. I was buying a lot more items. Um, I have made a wholesale purchase, which I will be bringing you out some information on uh, over the next couple of, uh, well, maybe even next week. We'll have to see how we go. But um, a first dive into the wholesale world. So that'll be some really interesting information to kind of sift through myself and then obviously bring you guys as well with this documentation that I'm doing on YouTube. Um, yeah, guys, look, a lot of inventory purchase this week. But what I will say, if you broke down those numbers there, 46 sold items, $1,848 in revenue. When you take out the postage, that's a $26 sold item average, well below what I would normally have my average at, which is normally, I think, between $35 and $40. So look, what I will say is to just simply don't be disappointed with any sale that you get. I mean, when I see a $20 to $25 sale pop up, I'm not excited because they just come through on a regular basis. And when they're under the average, you generally don't get as excited. Um, but I really do think that you should just really kind of cherish the sales that you do see pop up on your page because they do all add up. If I didn't get the $46, $25 sales this week, I wouldn't have had about $1,200 worth of sales for the entire week. So look, I'm really, um, I guess, you know, fortunate to be in a position where I can get those slightly higher sales and I'm also getting them on a more regular basis. But really the, the big thing is here guys, that they do all add up and you should not discourage yourself if you're selling items for 20 to $25 because big things can happen if you keep chipping away and keep selling your items. So keep listing them, uh, keep taking best offers because even then, if it's a $30 item that you're taking a 20 to 25 best offer on, again, it all adds up. So um, for anyone out there, obviously use the eProfit app to work out um, your profits and whether or not a $15 to $20 profit is something that you even wanna bother with. Or if you think that's a great result, hopefully the eProfit app can really help you. Um, but I just thought I'd highlight that in today's video. I mean, I've looked at the numbers and gone, well, geez, at least I'm really happy that they've come through because it's allowed me to get up to the numbers that I need for my weekly basis. A very different week, but um, I guess, yeah, a slow growth week, which is still not the end of the world. Um, like I said, guys, I'll be doing some videos around my wholesale over the next few weeks um, to see how that goes. Really interested to see how it, how it does play out. 
Uh, and then we'll do a trip to the thrift as well on Thursday. And then we'll be back again next week with another what sold. So um, hope you're enjoying these videos. Let me know if you wanna see anything, uh, anything different, anything unique, any new video ideas out there that you'd like to see me do. I'm more than happy to add it to my video ideas list. And uh, yeah, until next week, guys, hopefully you're selling a heap yourself. Uh, let me know what your best sold sales item was in the comments because I always love to get that on a weekly basis. Um, we'll see you in the next vid. Thanks for tuning in.